Hi friends, David here from Above AVL. I just got rained on, that's okay. But what we wanna talk about today is taking this LED wall design that we put together in the previous video, if you didn't check that out, talking about uh, just making nice vertical lines, popping them across your stage. And what we wanna do is turn it into a stepped design because this is a really easy design that you can do with an LED wall that can give you some really nice benefits. Number one, going with a step design means that uh, what you can actually do is you could have this be something where people walk out to stage and kind of their heads revealed first and then down because you've got a step design. So let's go ahead and take a look, think about some of the things we can do with it and build it. So let's dive in. <laughs> So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another fly bar or two and then start low on my right side with panels from over here and then pop up to the left side. All right, so to start, I've gone ahead, I've laid out some fly bars, I've got my next row started. And so basically I am four wide, I'm building on a canvas that's basically four wide and four tall. So this is just gonna be nice and simple where row one's gonna be one layer, you know, then two high here three high here and four high here. So I'm gonna end up removing this panel, uh, adding a few panels here and rocking and rolling. So let's do it. All right, you know, we've got one, then we've got two, then we've got three, then we've got four, all showing the same top corner of my screen right now because it's not configured. So now we're gonna go ahead and configure it and talk about some of the things that make this unique, some ways you can adjust it, and how it can really help you make some interesting stuff on your stage. So I'm gonna double check my wiring and then configure it in the processor. All right, now my wiring is a hot mess, so we're gonna show you on the screen and show the video as I do it as to, you know, if you totally don't wire things right, it's pretty easy to work through here in the software. If you pull a processor out of the box, never been used before, no configuration, this is what you're gonna get every time. You get basically the upper left-hand corner of whatever signal you're sending on every panel. So every panel thinks it's the first panel of your wall, and now we get to map it. So mapping in VMP is really easy, even when you're dealing with an odd layout. And especially in this case, where we're dealing with a really poorly wired layout. So the first thing you can do is you can click on your port and you see something happens on the wall here. This is the mapping switch. Uh, you can turn it on permanently down here, but it, it comes up whenever you turn on mapping or whenever you choose a port to grab. And this is, a super, super helpful window because it tells you the order that stuff's actually wired in. Should you do it in a logical way? Should you do it in a way that makes sense? Yes, if you don't, however, it's absolutely fine in VMP and it works really well. So looking at my wall here, for example, what we've got going on is it tells you screen number, so that's the S, this is all on screen one. Then port number, this is all on the first port as well. And then panel number is the bottom. So we basically start here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so totally wacky, totally, totally disorganized way of wiring it, but it doesn't matter. As we noted, so I'm just gonna start in the middle of my canvas here and I just click and drag to drop these. Yeah, one, two, three. And you see it's nice that they disappear when you patch them, uh, when you add them in. So then four, all the way down. And if you do it right, then you get a nice smooth image, just like that. And so whether you map it and whether you wire things in a way that makes sense or doesn't, as long as you follow your wiring order to bring in the ports, bring in the panels into this window, you can place them on your canvas wherever you need to, and then still have success in making a really interesting design like this stepped design work for your situation. So. Taking a look at a wall like this, you say to yourself, okay, 
how does this work and how can I get the most out of a design like this? First of all, you see the focus racking. This camera's on autofocus, which is why we keep getting Moyar. If you stick in manual focus like this camera, you can totally get rid of that on most walls, especially if it's a good wall. I'm pretty close to it, so it looks like right now the focus is picking up a little bit of it, but it's pretty easy to get rid of on a quality wall at an appropriate pixel pitch. Regardless, stepped designs like this are great for a couple things when you're working in live events, okay? Uh, number one, like I said, if somebody walks out behind this to make an entrance on stage, it makes a really cool entrance, a lot like a game show, right? Where people walk out kind of from behind some scenery, you can kind of see them, but you can't totally, looks really nice, okay? This is also a great option to save some budget and just extend a screen. Maybe you've got a bigger rectangle screen going this way, and you just wanna extend it further to the sides of the stage. You know, budgetarily, obviously doing steps like this costs half as much as it would to, you know, have another panel and, and fill it in as a full rectangle, right? And there's a lot of variations you can do with it. You could do like double high at the bottom and then the rest across. The benefit there being, if it's on a stage, a riser, uh, a taller platform, maybe you have it at the front edge of stage, like the curtains on either side of the stage that kind of define the stage, like banners at a festival or something like that. And you could do something like this, and if you complete out, say, the first two rows, okay, you can then use that. You have a full width of two rows so that you can run graphics nice and high. You know, graphics are gonna fill the entire space. But when you need to do text, you can do that on your bottom couple rows because those are the ones that are actually long enough to display meaningful text, logos, etc. So this is a really cool design and, and just kind of a building block that you can put into other designs with LED displays and be able to kind of stretch them out further and create some more visual interest. Because obviously, you can go ahead then and black everything out behind it, you know, have lights. You can have a light hanging here, you can have a light here, and you can work off that rectangle and, and fill that space with other elements to make it more interesting. And that's where this can get really fun. So if you enjoyed this video and you're in the market, you're like, hey, I need an LED wall. I want something that's gonna be good and reliable. You know, maybe you don't have a million dollar budget. That's okay. What we do at Above AVL is we look across multiple brands that we're dealers for. We're gonna find the best thing that fits your needs the best. And the first step to doing that is popping in your info into our LED wall calculator. It's just gonna ask you a few questions about the size of wall you're looking to do, how far people are gonna be away from it, and it's gonna help determine the best pixel pitch and the best size of wall for you. And then we're gonna look at it manually. We're gonna go ahead and say, hey, you know, what's this person trying to do? Are they, how are they installing it? How can we help you find the perfect fit for your needs and get it in your hands? If that sounds good, we'll see you over at our LED wall calculator at aboveavl.com. And of course, you'll catch the next video here as long as you're subscribed. We'll see you there. Thanks.